Welcome everyone to our fourth lecture of English um, language second semester and in this lecture we're going to cover uh, inshallah unit four and in unit four we're going to deal with the main theme it's great ideas okay this is the theme of the unit now we're gonna try to um, cover as usual some vocabularies um, listening we're gonna ha listen to great business ideas uh, we have the reading part we're going to have um, three articles actually three great ideas of starting business and how they developed the business we'll we'll see and of course the most important part is the language review or the grammatical part and here you're going to uh, study both past simple and past continuous as you remembered in the previous semester we study them isolated like different past simple in a unit and past continuous in another unit now if we're going to use them both in the same context maybe sometimes in the same sentence it depends on the meaning how we're going to combine them and when can i decide that here in this um, I don't know this verb or this blank. I need to put ed and here. I need to put I an ing We'll see how can we manage that now the the part that I love the most is the skills part I believe every unit um, There is a specific skill you're learning by listening um, to some idea people how do they deal with a specific thing now here the skill that you're going to learn is successful meetings. How can a meeting be successful? And why would I call that meeting is not successful? And of course, it belongs to the person who's holding it. So everything will uh, cover it in details. Okay, let's get ready. And I want you to have your notebook, your pencil or pen next to you. So you can write down all the notes, all the new vocabularies, all the new grammatical rules, and then review it after watching um, the record. Now, if you're in the car, still, that's not an excuse. You can pause the video, pull over, try to write down what's important, even if you're using your notes on your mobile phone. But it's really important to take notes while you're watching my lecture or any of the other lectures. Now, all the time, I am keep telling you any new vocabulary for you. You've never heard about it. You don't know what is the meaning of it. You're not sure how to pronounce it. It's better to write it down in your notebook and then try to use any of the dictionaries. Listen to the correct pronunciation, the exact meaning, put it in different sentences. Here you are. You're enhancing um, your bank of vocabularies and in this way, you can use it in your daily life and by the more vocabularies you're learning you'll be more fluent in English okay so the first thing that we're going to cover is um, vocabulary part and here we're going to learn verb and noun combination so we'll see how can we combine them the combination that we're talking about is we are going to discover it in this in this activity actually so what uh, we are required to do here is to match the word partnerships from 1 to 6 to their definitions from 1 to F. So here I have, for example, to take advantage of an opportunity. Take advantage. So take is the verb, advantage is the noun. So we usually um, get them together when, when I want to use advantage. I usually say take advantage. And I have um, raise sta status, raise somebody's status. So raise and status comes together. I cannot say lift status or, or you know, um, it has to be raise, okay? Uh, just like ride the horse, okay? You cannot say climbing the horse. No, that's no way. You need to say ride and horse together. They come together. So the verb and the noun they should stick to each other's. I cannot use another verb. Uh, to enter a market, I cannot say to, I don't know, get inside a market. No, it's better to say enter a market. It means getting inside. 
Okay, um, or start uh, for here a market, I mean um, the business market, it's not like a supermarket. Okay, to extend a product range, to meet a need, to make a breakthrough. So what I want you to do is try to pause the video, read the other, um, hear the definitions of them, and try to match, like for example, to take advantage of an opportunity, which one explains that meaning, which one of these uh, definitions explains the meaning. This is what we mean by, so here, you're learning um, a new skill. There are some dictionaries, you'll find it English Arabic or English Kurdish or English Turkish, English, I don't know, um, Swedish, okay? Um, but there are some dictionaries, they are English English, okay? So here, when you are starting, use, when you start using English English dictionary, um, in this way, you'll help yourself to somehow stop thinking in your native language and start thinking only in Arabic. So it means you're, I don't know, reducing the amount of the translation process that's happened in your brain when you're talking and in this way it affects your fluency. Because when you want to say hello or my name is, um, it's unconsciously that your brain translated from whether your native language is Arabic, for example. So your brain is translating it from Arabic to uh, Arabic, which is um, ismi. Okay, so your brain translates it to my name. This process takes some seconds. So you will be slow in talking. You won't be fluent. How can we enhance that? How can we reduce this process? Is by keep using English, English dictionary. Okay, um, I think I talked too much now. Pause the video, try to do it by yourself, and then get back to me to see the correct answers. Okay, here we go. These are the correct answers. Now, to take an advantage, uh, to take advantage of an opportunity. So usually, opportunity means a chance. So it means to do something when you get the chance to do it. When you have the chance to do it, get to do it. Go for it. Um, to rate somebody's status, it means. F, to make somebody look or feel more important. Now, to enter a market, it's E, to start selling goods or services in a new area. So the market that I'm talking about here is not the supermarket. I'm talking about a new area. You're starting dealing with that new area in business world. Now, number four, to extend a product range, it means A, to offer, um, to offer sorry, to offer a larger var uh, variety of um, goods, okay? And to meet the need, it means B, to do or provide something that is necessary, a need, something is necessary, everyone need it. To make a breakthrough, it means to make an important discovery or a change, something huge, something have never been done before. Okay, let's shift. We're still dealing with vocabularies and I'm going to still um, using the same verb noun combination that I have from the previous exercise, but this time I'm going to fill the blanks in um, this written text. So, read this extract from a talk by the head of a research and development department. So there is a person who's the head um, Usually very important companies, they have a specific department called research and development. So the head of this department is talking. Now this is part of his talking. Then complete the gaps from one, number one, to number six with the correct form of a word partnership from exercise A, which they are here. Okay, I already put it for you. You don't need to go back to the uh, previous exercise. Now try to read this text very carefully. Try to do it by yourself before you check your answers with me and then um, match it with the uh, key answers that I'm going to show you. Okay, uh, now let's see the correct answers. Okay, so great ideas are generated in different ways. Sometimes an idea may simply be when when a company 
takes advantage of an opportunity to extend its product there, to offer more choice to existing customers. So some of them, they offer more choices to customers that they are already existed. Or a great idea could allow a company to enter a market which was closed to it before. So they're getting to a new area. Now, companies which are prepared to spend a lot on R&D, so R&D, it's research and development department, make a breakthrough by having an original idea for a product which others later copy, for example, Sony and Walkman. So um, the research and development department usually try to research for new ideas, for new things that have never been exist existed. Now, if you um, wondering what we are, what do I mean by Walkman? It's usually these type of uh, portable media players like cassettes and others, uh, speakers and everything. Then it's manufactured by Sony. Uh, it started from the 80s, I think, with the series and the cassettes and everything. So it was. Um, a new idea, okay, a new discovery, they, they, they made it, and then other companies start copying them. On the other hand, some products are developed in response to customer research. Sometimes a customer needs something, okay, so he's doing the research, he's, he's, he really needs this. They come from customer ideas. These products are made to meet a need, so there is a necessity for it. It's just like last year when we had COVID, so uh, a lot of people... I don't know, need these type of sanitizer and stuff. So we start looking for them. Um, then new companies um, enter this market of dealing with alcoholic liquids and sanitize, hand sanitizers and stuff and even masks. So they got to a new um, area by the need of the customers. We needed them. Even Zoom meetings and these type of apps have been created according to the uh, customer need. So to, to satisfy consumer demand. Or the product does something similar to another product, but faster. So it saves time, just like the mobile phones. Um, now we're having different type of, of brands, but like iPhone can be regarded as faster than Nokia. Okay, so um, iPhone didn't come up with something new. but They made different change on it and they made it much better with a lot of, um, I don't know, new characteristics, new stuff, uh, new items have been added, and of course, it's much faster. The internet also, internet have been existed before, but now we're reaching to 5G, so it becomes much faster. Some people will buy new products because the product raises their status, gives them a new, more upmarket image. Okay, um, I'm going to let you listen to this record uh, recording to um according to this activity so what i want you to do is to listen carefully to the last part of the talk and complete um the gaps to form war partnerships with the word in italic so for example the word waste which type of verb should i use with it and the word the environment so these words are in italic a gap and an award so we're going to listen to the record, try to find out what type of verbs should be combined with them. Let's listen together. Unit 4. Great Ideas. Track 38. Other people will buy any green product which reduces waste or protects the environment, even if it is more expensive. If an idea is really good and the product fills a gap in the market, it may even win an award for innovation. Okay, if you want to listen um, to the record one more time, you didn't catch it really well, you can just go back and, and play it backward. Um, you will listen to it. Now, let me show you the correct answers again, one more. And every time I remind you, please try to do it by yourself before you're checking your answers with me. So other people will buy any green product with reduces waste or protects the environment. So the word reduce comes with waste if you want to reduce the amount of the waste. And with the word environment, we uh, use the word, uh, the verb, sorry, protect. So protect the environment. 
even if it's more expensive, if an idea is really good and the product fills a gap, so we say this product fill this gap, just like uh, I mentioned that we had a gap, um, a gap of, for example, um, the internet is not really good, so we want uh, something faster, so a company would come and try to fill that gap. It may even win an award for innovation, so they would regard that as an innovation and even they get awarded by it. So, now what do you need to add to the previous verb noun combination that I had it before is reduce waste, protect the environment, uh, fill a gap and win an award. Okay, so we're moving to the listening part of this unit uh, under the title of Great Business Ideas. We'll see this lady, she's trying to talk about uh, great business ideas. Let's see what we mean by that. Now we have this record, we're going to listen to it. Listen to the first part of the interview. What products and services does Kate mention? Why does she think they were excellent ideas? So here you read, you need really, really, really to listen to it carefully and try to write down your notes. So we have three, two types of questions here. Two questions. What products and services she mentioned? Try to focus on that. And why does she think they were excellent ideas? So of course she's going to mention two things and she thinks that they're amazing. Why? What's the reason? Let's listen to the record together. Unit 4. Great Ideas, Track 39. In your opinion, what were the best business ideas of the last 15 years? I thought about this for quite a long time. And in my opinion, it's a service and two products. The first is eBay. And this works for me because it provides individuals and small businesses with a channel to market that didn't exist before. It started in the dot-com boom and has been extremely successful with a turnover in 2009 of $2.4 billion. It's not a new idea though. Running an auction is almost as old as society. It's based on a model of traditional auctions. It's just transferred the model and the thinking to a different environment. My second is the product, and it's a USB stick for computers or plug and play devices. This enabled data and pictures to be easily transportable and satisfied a demand for easy portability from computer to computer. The amount of data that can be transported now is enormous and it had the huge benefit of meaning that you didn't have to take your portable computer with you everywhere. So it satisfied a basic customer need. The technology itself also enabled a lot of other devices. The final one is the digital camera. I'm not sure it's, if it's strictly an invention of the last 15 years or if it's just become a mass market item but it's revolutionized photography and it's now incorporated into many other devices as a free gift, like mobile phones or PCs. And again, it satisfied a customer demand to share pictures and images quickly and easily. So I know she talked a little bit for, I don't know, a long time of a period, Try to listen to it more than one time, as I told you before, and take your notes. Okay, now it's the time to show you the correct answers. So firstly, what products and services that does Kate mention? So she said eBay and um, the USB stick and then the digital camera. Three, I can regard two products and one service. Now. Why she think they were great ideas? Okay, now let's get to eBay. eBay, for example, she said it's were, uh, like it's a very great idea because it provides individuals and small businesses with a channel 
to market that didn't exist before. So it's simply not a matter of just clicking on the object and you buy it. For me, I can have my own market, I can put stuff there and then try to promote for it so people would buy from me, but it's not really from me, it's from eBay. So it's a new idea uh, in the business world. Now the USB stick, it's really important. Why? Because it enables data and pictures to be easily transportable from one laptop to other or from one computer to the other one. While the digital camera, because it's revolutionized, okay, it's something made a great revolution in the world uh, of photography and is inco um, incorporated into many other devices. It can be uh, easily incorporated to other devices. Let's shift to another uh, listening activity and under the same title which is a great business ideas we're going to listen to the same lady but now it's a different record now here the activity says listen to the second part and answer these questions let's see what are the questions question number one what types of companies spend a lot of time and money on research and development so what type of companies Question number two, which company spends nearly 25% of the cost of sale on research and development? So we need to fully understand these two questions in case one of them is not really clear. You can just translate the ambiguous words and then you will be able to fully comprehend it. Then we're going to listen to the record. So let's listen to it together. Unit 4. Great Ideas. Track 40. Do companies spend enough time on research and development? I think this depends very much on the industry. There are some product-based companies, like pharmaceuticals and high-tech companies, that spend an enormous amount of time and money on research and development. Nearly 25% of the costs of sale, for example, at Ericsson, the Finnish mobile phone company, are on research and development. I strongly believe that most companies can benefit from using information and relationships within their own company to actually develop new products and services. My definition of innovation is to look at what everybody else sees and see something different. So that might mean looking at what you already do and looking at where you can do it slightly differently to increase your product range or extending your products into new markets. This can save time and money. Okay, if the record was not really clear, you can go back and listen to it one more time. Okay, I hope like you took uh, the notes uh, in your notebook. Now it's the time to see the answers of these two questions. So what type of companies uh, spend a lot of time and money on research and development? It's actually, she said, product-based companies. So a company that has a specific product to release. Okay, now for example, these type of companies that's dealing with uh, medicines, uh, dealing with the pharmacy side, and stuff that's related, the companies that's related with the technology also. Uh, any technological items need to have um, to be developed. Uh, how it's going to be developed while researching, doing the appropriate research, and update what do they have. Now, which company spends 25% of their sale on development and of, on research and development? It's actually, um, she mentioned one of these uh, Finnish um, and Swedish company for mobile phone, Ericsson. Okay, so the interviewee referred to the company as Finnish, but in fact, it's just Swedish. So this is one of the um, common mistakes. For me, I used to think it's also Finnish, just like Nokia, but apparently it's not. It's Swedish. 
However, like this company is doing great job in this field by spending a lot of money on this department research and development. Now we're going to listen to the record one more time, the same record, but this time we're having a different style of activity, which is like um, a text, but it has gaps, so it needs to be filled with these eight, uh, we need to fill these eight gaps. Okay, so listen to the second part again and complete the gaps in the audio script. I all the time encourage you to read uh, the text first, try to fully comprehend it, understand it, and then fill the gaps uh, with the words that are necessary um, to fulfill the meaning, okay, by listening to the record. So I hope that you're going to read it first and then listening. So, pause the video. Now it's the time to listen to the record. Here we go. Unit 4. Great Ideas. Track 40. Do companies spend enough time on research and development? I think this depends very much on the industry. There are some product-based companies, like pharmaceuticals and high-tech companies, that spend an enormous amount of time and money on research and development. Nearly 25% of the costs of sale, for example, at Ericsson, the Finnish mobile phone company, are on research and development. I strongly believe that most companies can benefit from using information and relationships within their own company to actually develop new products and services. My definition of innovation is to look at what everybody else sees and see something different. So that might mean looking at what you already do and looking at where you can do it slightly differently to increase your product range or extending your products into new markets. This can save time and money. Okay, if the record was not really clear and has too much information, you can listen to it one more time. Now let's see the correct answer. No cheating. Do it by yourself and then get back to me. So now it's the time to see the correct answers. So she said, I strongly believe that most companies can benefit from using information and relationships when their own company to actually develop new products and services. My definition of innovation, as she said, is to look at what everybody else sees and see something different. So that might mean looking at what you already do and looking at where you can do it slightly differently to increase your product range or extending your products into new markets. This can save time and money. So we're moving to the other part of this unit, which is the reading part. Now, this reading part, maybe it's a little bit more complicated and it's getting more complicated. So this is the idea because your level is getting high, higher by time. Okay, unit by unit, it's getting higher. So actually, in, this, in the reading part, I have three articles. This is article number one. Try to pause the video, read it very well, uh, translate what you need, uh, fully comprehend it because we are going to have some questions about it. And now we're moving to article number two. You can pause the video or take a screenshot. It's up to you. Okay, here is the second article called Safer Cycling. So if you're cycling, how to become safer, the company try to think about it. Try again to post the video or take a screenshot. Read this article very well. I know there are a lot of uh, new vocabularies for you, but here we go. That's the point. Write them down in your notebook. Here is the uh, th third article. It's talking about going for gold. So it's a new idea uh, for selling uh, gold. Try to read it very well again. 
pause the video or take a screenshot fully comprehended and then now we're going to move to the activities okay so I have this activity it's trying to combine the three uh, articles that we have so what I have here four questions now, how I'm going to answer each question by dividing it like question number one, I need to answer according to the first article and according to the second article, safer cycling and according to the third article. Try to pause the video right now. Um, you can write down these questions. You can go back and, and read the articles one more time to fully comprehend what are you what are you looking for. What are the questions asking about? How do you need to summarize your idea? You can even draw this schedule or diagram in your notebook and try to analyze the answers. Now we're going to discuss the, um, we can say the key answer. It doesn't have to be copy pasted, but I'm trying to show you the main idea. Okay, you can add more. Take the full sentence, take the full paragraph, as long as we're sharing the same idea. So, what is a great or unusual idea? Now, for who needs to translate for Google, um, here the unusual thing is phone software that can translate foreign languages almost instantly. So, like if you're calling someone who's talking, let's say, Swedish, and you don't know Swedish, uh, the, the, the app will translate immediately so in this way you don't need interpreters now for safer cycling the great idea or the unusual idea is that um, cycling collar okay so you put this collar with an airbag inside it just like the airbag inside the car here we go they put it on their neck in order to protect the head by the way and the skull now going for gold so what is the great or the unusual idea here? It's like vending machine, okay? Uh, if you don't know what's the meaning of vending, try just to write it in Google, you'll see pictures of vendors. So vending machine for gold bullion. Now question number two, what problem does this idea solve? Now each article, there is a problem, try to, they are trying to solve it okay after doing research and try to develop their products so what is the idea or what is the problem that each of these ideas try to solve so the first article who needs uh, translators try to solve the problem of what people of different languages talking to each other on the phone so sometimes you're facing difficulty especially in multicultural or multinational um, work environment that you're not fully comprehending what that person is saying or you don't know that language so while you're talking to them you will be able to get the accurate translation now for safer cycling the the idea is solving um the problem of protecting cyclists in case of accidents so you know everyone cycling using bicycles they get to so many accidents just like any other type of vehicles like cars um, motorcycles so all of these can cause an accident so how to protect cyclists you know it's not like a car that you can have airbags um, in the wheel steering uh, steering wheel or um, the two doors or like these uh, specific places where you can uh, hide the airbag now the cycle the bicycle it's like that nothing is there so they try to solve it now for going for gold people wanting a quick and easy way to buy gold so there are some people who don't want to have jewelries they just want to have gold instead of money in case of like I don't know the dollar coming up and down or um, the euro or the petrol or so gold is the safest way to have your money aside. Question number three, which markets are mentioned in relation to this idea? So every single idea, they're trying to work 
and their goal is to go through this is specific market so for um, Google for example phone users so they're trying to um, reach people who's uh, who are using uh, mobile phones now the caller thing trying to get to people who's cyclist using bicycles most of the time and for going for gold trying to get to the market of global everywhere fitness centers and cruise ships question number four in terms of time at what stage of development is the idea in terms of time regarding to the time at what stage of development is this idea is it just like a matter of idea they didn't apply it yet are they working on it is are they going to release it soon so in which stage so here if you are trying to google um, these ideas maybe you will find some of them because this version is a little bit like few years ago of the curriculum I'm, I'm, uh, I mean so maybe you will find some of them had been already achieved so for who needs translator should be ready in a couple of years so right now actually we're having Google translator but we didn't get I don't think we get to the point of um, using applications for instant calls I don't know if there are any please let me know uh, now for the cycling thing will be on sale early next year I, I can see um, that there are some uh, products using the same idea around the market now going for gold 20 machines already in place and new machines are coming next so it's have been already uh, applicable this idea have been already applied you love gold and silver there's an ATM in Midtown for you but as CBS 2 Cindy Shu reports you better have a lot of cash on you here it is on West 57th Street, right outside Stacks Rare Coins, the gold to go ATM that is folks stopping, staring, and snapping pictures. Only in New York. I <laughs> gold on the street. Only in New York. I don't know, I just think it's kind of odd. I don't know why anyone would ever use it. Vegan Yegparian says there are lots of reasons. Some people might be doing it for a gift, which has happened for hundreds of years, uh, to just people buying a little bit of gold, socking some of their money away uh, for that rainy day. Now, there are seven different gold and silver bars and coins to choose from. The most expensive is the one-ounce gold eagle coin that goes for nearly $1,400. The least expensive, the silver eagle, for $28. Yegparian showed me how it works. He chose the five-gram gold bar, which costs $259. Next, you place ID, such as a driver's license or passport, in the scanner. Then feed in the cash. And we do mean cash. That's all the machine takes. No credit cards. Down drops your gold in a black gift box along with your change. And you just go in and grab it. Inside the box, your treasure. I think it's wonderful. You know, I want gold to go and gold to stay. I would buy one of the little ones to have in my house. That would be cool. I ran into the Hendrix brothers who say, Gold is so valuable, it's kind of awkward that it's there. It comes out of here, and it looks like this. Can I have it? <laughs> no, you can't have it, but you can look at it. <laughs> Marty, you can have it for $259. <laughs> now, this is not a 24-hour ATM. It's open six days a week and keeps the same business hours as the coin store. In Midtown, Cindy Shu, CBS2 News. Biking is fun, good for the environment, and is becoming more and more popular. Bicycle helmets, however, are not nearly as popular. Only 5 to 20% of cyclists in Europe wear one. Bicycle helmets protect against serious head injuries and can save lives. Many people used to ride without a helmet simply because it was heavy and you sweat a lot. Nowadays, they don't wear them because they don't like the way they look, and it messes up their hair. But now there is a revolutionary solution. The two industrial designers, Therese Alstin and Anna Haub from Malmo, have invented an invisible life-saving device, an airbag for your head. It's really motivating and a huge privilege to save lives at work. We get feedback all the time from customers who have been in real accidents and don't know if they would have still been alive without our product. 
What began as a thesis for their industrial design degrees in 2005, today has evolved into their own company with 17 employees. At first, no one believed in these two women and their idea. There was nothing else like it on the market. So the two pioneers had to work hard to get the attention of sponsors for their research. They filed early on for a patent which helped a lot. Any time you try to develop something radically new, it's normal that you are confronted with skeptic points of view. It's been like that for us. It has been important to know that we are the experts in this, and no one else knows more about this topic than we do. So as long as we are convinced that it's going to work, everything is possible. And they did it. After seven years of development, the Hervding came onto the market at the end of 2011. Discreetly packaged as a scarf with a removable fabric cover, the Hervding transforms itself into a bicycle helmet only when there is an accident. When the rider crashes, the airbag inflates in a tenth of a second and works like a hood covering the head. But how does it work? In the front and rear of the collar, there are sensors that measure the acceleration, direction and movement of the rider. The folded airbag and a gas cartridge are tucked away in the neck area of the scarf. If the sensors detect an accident, the gas generator quickly fills the airbag with helium. The brain of the Hervding consists of large amounts of data from real accidents, crash tests and falls with stuntmen. Sudden braking, slipping on ice or rear-end collisions, the researchers tested and evaluated every conceivable situation. When the Hervding is activated and you wear it, it scans your body movements 200 times a second. If you happen to be in an accident, your motion pattern would be totally different from normal cycling. And the mathematicians found a method and a logarithm to distinguish between normal cycling and accidents. Comparisons in crash tests show that the invisible helmet absorbs the impact of crashes three times as well as the best bike helmets. Similar to a plane, the small black box is integrated into the collar. This stores the data which triggers the airbag. Users send the hoofding back after an accident and the black box provides them with valuable data from the real world. Their idea for the bicycle airbag is so awesome that the Swedish pair have now been nominated for the European Inventor Award. It is of course a big honor that we are one of the nominees of this award. It's always an honor to be a participant in a big and esteemed competition. I hope we will win. The invention has a lot of potential. Soon it could also be used to protect the heads of motorcyclists, skiers and snowboarders or even epilepsy patients. We will see if the Swedes can win the European Inventor Award in Berlin, one of the highest awards for researchers and scientists with their life-saving idea. One thing is for sure, no other bicycle helmet combines safety and style as well as the Hervding. This is the lovely part, and I hope it's not going to be hard for you because we already covered these two tenses, but now we need to know how to use them together. So, we're reaching the uh, grammar part of the unit. We're going to deal with past simple and past continuous. Let's do a quick review for it. Now, for every sentence, English sentence needs to have a, a subject first, and then the verb, and then the rest of the sentence, whether it's object, adverb, adjective, so on. So, firstly, I can I can say um, or I can use um, clear names or I can use pronouns like he, she, it, I, we, you, they. So, in a case of affirmative, this means positive sentence. I, you, he, she, it, we, they worked. So simple. You put the subject, you put the verb and you put it in past tense. If it's regular, then we add ed. If it's irregular, need we, we need to change somehow, like run, ran, uh, go, went, uh, write, wrote. So you need to cover the irregular verbs. In case of doing it negative, 
So here people get confused a little bit. Some of them using was. No. Put it in your mind. If I don't have any auxiliary, like I don't have is, are, am, was, where, have, has, had, uh, any of these auxiliaries, it means I need to use either do, does, or did. These are three sisters. I can regard them my emergency. So, if the sentence in the present, I need do and does. If the sentence in the past, it means I need to call did to come and help me. And then I put not with it. So, he didn't, they didn't, she didn't work. Now, the most important thing you need to put it into consideration that the verb work, no ed at all. Because already the, um, the ed have been eaten by did. Okay, just to remind you that did eat the ed from the verb. So, here we go. I don't put it. I don't put ed. If the verb was irregular, if you see like they went, I say they didn't go. So no more past tense to the verb. Did already they're doing the job. Now if I have a question, in case of a question, I don't do anything. I just take did and put it at the beginning of the sentence. That's it. It becomes a question. Did I or did you or did they work? Now when I'm asking with did, we say these type of questions are short answer questions. What do I mean by short answer question? When I say, um, did they work? You answer me with yes, they did or no, they didn't. That's it. You don't, I don't need um, a lot of information. It means I'm already aware of what's going on, but I'm just double check. I'm a little bit hesitated, not sure. Now, how can I use past tense? I have these uses. First one, we use the past simple to refer to states and actions which finished in the past. Something starts and finished in the past, nothing related to now, nothing related to the future at all. So he left for Australia yesterday. That's already happened. He was planning and then he did it and then he traveled. He's already there, nothing related to now. Done. When I was young, I wanted to be a pilot. So that's a silly idea that I had it in the past. Okay, had nothing related to now. Something starts in the past, ends in the past, finished, that's it. Well. Number two, the action can be short. Okay, sometimes I'm talking about very short action. Okay, um, sometimes it's a little bit longer or repeated. For example, they took a taxi to get there. Or to go to get here. So um, we already agreed to meet. They couldn't find I don't know their driver, so they took a taxi and they came. The flight lasted ten hours. I took the same train every day. Here we're a little bit um, a little bit we can say getting to irregular conditions. So leave this one with the everyday thingy. Number three, remember that some verbs are normally used in simple tenses only. Okay, there are some verbs. I can just use them in simple tense. They own five shops in Madrid alone. Okay, I it means that I cannot put ing to it. There are some verbs in English that you don't use ing with it. Like know, understand, love, like... Okay, these are somehow we can call them um, concrete verbs. It means I don't do them uh, regularly. I don't put ing to it. They didn't know the market forecast. Did our guests like the food? So I don't say liking because like is either something you like it or not. It's not you like it for a short period of time and that's it. No, like and love and thing, no, understand. These type of verbs, um, it would be never with ing. So even without thinking um, of the whole sentence, immediately you go with the ed. While for past continuous, now the form of it, it's the same idea. We start with the subject, I, he, she, it, and then either was or were. So, I, he, she, it, take was. You, we, they, take where. Was is the past of is and am. 
where is the past of are and then the verb should be with ing she was working he was working it was working i was working now you were working they were working and we were working in a case of making it negative i don't need to think about it at all i already have was and where i just put not next to it so it wasn't working they were not working in a matter of a question i just take was and put it at the beginning or i take where and put it at the beginning that's it was she working were they working that's it and again uh, since i'm asking with an auxiliary verb if i'm asking with do does he she it is uh, all of these um I need to answer the short answer so either yes she was working or no she wasn't working or in this case yes they were working no they were not working that's it or no they weren't okay very short answer now the uses of past continuous firstly talk about actions that were not yet finished and continued over a period of time I don't mean are not finished up till now, okay? Um, an action that happened in the past, but it took time. For example, at that time, we were still trying to solve our recruitment problem. So trying to solve that problem took maybe one week, two months, a whole year. Sometimes this period of time includes another event which is completed. Let's see how. She had an accident. Okay. So, she did an accident while she was driving to work. So, the process of driving to work takes, let's say, minimum 30 minutes. When she did the accident, she did it in a matter of two seconds. So, when I have two actions in the verb, one is continually happening for a time and the other one happened immediately in the middle of it. So, here, the one that takes longer... The process of driving take 30 minutes, we put ing. But the process of had, having an, an, an accident takes two or three seconds. Okay, so this one we make it past uh, simple. But this one taking a period of time, we put ing to it. Let's see this. I was talking to him on the phone. So my phone call took, let's say, took uh, 15 minutes or maybe an hour. I'm going to say an hour. Um, I was talking to my mom for a whole hour. During this period of talking, continually talking to my mom, I heard an explosion. I heard something. I heard a noise outside. The process of hearing something took maybe one minute, less than one minute. It's shorter. Something happened, started, finished in the past. So, do you get it? Now, the other case refer to situations that were changing over time in the past some some stuff keep changing during the 1980s many of the older industries were closing down so during the whole 10 years from 1980 to 1989 for example during these whole 10 years the process of closing down some industries were happening for this period. At that time, we were coming out of um, recession and things were improving. So also, this something took a period of time. So put it on your consideration. We are using past continuous when I'm having something happen in the past, but not happen and start and finish immediately. No, it takes time. It takes period of time. On a cold, dark night, Alyssa was working late at the office. It was already midnight when she finally finished her work. As she was leaving her office, she realized the streets were now empty. She was old. Hello. Why 
Now she was walking back home. She heard some footsteps behind her. She turned around to look, but no one was there. So she continued walking, but she could still hear footsteps behind her. Alyssa is really scared now, and she started to run, but the footsteps behind her got louder and faster. Someone was chasing her. As she was running, she saw a cemetery. She quickly ran into the cemetery and hid there. When Alyssa was hiding, the footsteps stopped. Maybe she lost him. Just then, Alyssa remembered there's a 24-hour convenience store nearby. She can go there for help. She quickly ran to the store. She went inside and begged the man for help. But the man said, In this video, we'll look at the past continuous. You may also know this as the past progressive. We use the past continuous to talk about an action in progress in the past. Let's examine this using a timeline with the example, someone was chasing her. Someone started chasing her sometime in the past but we don't know when. And that person stopped chasing her sometime in the past. Again, we don't know when, but we are talking about the whole period from start to finish. We can also use the past continuous for background events. For example, on a cold, dark night, Alyssa was working late at the office. This sentence sets the background and the setting of the story. We use the past simple for completed actions or repeated actions. For example, she quickly ran into the cemetery. This action is finished and completed. When we use two past simple actions, the second action happened after the first action. For example, she quickly ran into the cemetery and hid there. So she ran into the cemetery first, then she hid inside the cemetery. We can also combine the past continuous with the past simple. The past continuous refers to a longer background action or situation. The past simple refers to a shorter action. The shorter action happened while the longer action was still happening. But sometimes these two actions happen at the same time. For example, as she was leaving her office, she realized the streets were now empty. In this sentence, Alyssa leaving her office is the longer action and her realizing that the streets were now empty is the shorter action. So Alyssa was leaving her office and during this time she noticed that the streets were now empty but she didn't stop leaving the office when she noticed this. Sometimes the shorter action interrupted the longer action. While she was walking back home, she heard some footsteps behind her. 
she turned around to look. Alyssa walking back home is the longer action. Hearing the footsteps is the shorter action. In this case, the footsteps interrupted her walking and made her stop to look back before she continued walking again. We can use two past continuous actions in the same sentence to show that both actions were happening at the same time. For example, I was walking home and someone was following me. We don't know which action started first. Maybe the mysterious stalker started following Alyssa before she even left the office. Or maybe he started following her sometime after she left the office. We also don't know which one finished first. Maybe the stalker stopped following her after she arrived home. Or maybe sometime before she arrived home. We just know that during a certain period in the past, these two actions were happening at the same time. We can also use three, four, five, or even more past continuous actions in the same sentence. And all these actions were happening at the same time, sometime in the past. Let's look at the form now. The form for statements is subject plus was or were or wasn't and weren't for negatives plus verb in the ing form. For example, Alyssa was working late at the office. The form for yes no questions is was or were plus subject plus verb in the ing form. Was Alyssa working late? For open questions it's wh how question word plus was or were plus subject plus verb in the ing form. Why was Alyssa working late? To join past continuous and past simple actions, we use conjunctions such as while, when, and as. For example, while she was walking home, she heard some footsteps behind her. When Alyssa was hiding, the footsteps stopped. As she was running, she saw a cemetery. We can also switch the order of the tenses by placing the past simple at the front of the sentence. She heard some footsteps behind her while she was walking back home. Let's look at another example now. Alyssa was at home watching TV when her phone rang. Which action started first? Alyssa watching TV? or her phone ringing. Watching TV started first. Do we know when Alyssa started watching TV or when she stopped? No, we don't. Did the phone call interrupt Alyssa watching TV? Yes, it did. Did she continue watching TV after the phone call? Usually we assume she continued watching TV, but it can also be true that she stopped watching TV after the phone call. It all depends on the situation. Here we go, we're doing an activity applying what we've just learned about past simple and past continuous. So this exercise is about this guy. So we're going to read this paragraph and as you can see I have two alternatives here. I have two options, two choices. Which one of them I'm going to, to choose 
according to the um, grammar of the whole sentence and of course the meaning matters. So uh, people wrote were writing with the quills. So here, according to the meaning that people, they were doing it for a long period of time in the past, that is why we're using ing. Now what I want you to do is to pause the video, try to read the whole paragraph really carefully, and then continue watching it to read the article or the paragraph, sorry, with me. These are the correct answers. So the first one we said um, with ing we chose the uh, past continuous because people used to do such a thing for a long period of time. Now the second one it's invented. So he he came to an idea of inventing something. So something happened in the past but it didn't take very long time. It's an event happened in the past and done. Okay while he so here um it can be somehow be applied as a rule after a while we have um past continuous so while has an i and we should add ing also to the verb after it put that in your mind because while means something taking for a period of time so while he was working as a journalist he noticed something. So the second sentence, after a while, the second verb would be past simple. So something was happening for a long period of time, which is working as a journalist, and out of a sudden, he noticed. So something took shorter period of time, which is the noticing things. That is why we put it in past simple. So they said in 1938, so something in... Uh, in the past, by mentioning the year, he developed. So the, the matter of developing something here, it didn't take very long period of time. That is why we didn't say was developing. No, he developed in this year only. Okay, when he come up with this idea. And then the death of him, he died in this year, in 1985. So also the process or the uh, verb of dying, it didn't take very long period of time. Okay, so here we're going to learn a new skill, which is successful meetings. What a successful meeting means and how can we achieve that? So we are having uh, one record, actually, 41, but we're going to have two activities um, regarding this uh, record. So the first one, what I wanted to do is to read the two activities carefully and try to find out each activity what does it want or what does it need or what does it require so the first one here they said dc dynamics is an electronics company based in boston usa okay nice the marketing department held a meeting to discuss their new smartphone okay so they are going to have a meeting the marketing department to discuss what discuss their new smartphone Listen to the meeting, then answer this question. So we're going firstly to have two questions. Question number one, what were the main aims of the meeting? What were the main purposes or goals of the meeting? The main reasons behind uh, holding such a meeting. The second question, which month did they choose for, uh, for lounge, for lounging the new smartphone? And the same uh, record, you need to do this you need to um, check the expression with the chairperson uses. What type of um, expressions did he use? Okay, everyone, let's begin, shall we? Or he said, um, our main purpose is to decide the date of the launch. Uh, May, what do you think? Um, Ching, can you give us your opinion about this? So try to read them all and then um, like tick the phrases or the sentences or the expressions that the chairperson is going to use. Let's listen to the record together. Unit 4. Great Ideas. Track 41. Okay, everyone, let's begin, shall we? 
Our main purpose is to decide the date of the launch for our new product, DM2000. After that, we've got to decide the recommended retail price for the phone and talk about our marketing plans, okay? May, what's your opinion? Should we launch in June or September? Personally, I'm in favor of June. Let's get into the market early and surprise our competitors. It could give us a big advantage. It might even force them to bring out their new phones earlier. I mean, before they're really ready to do so. Thanks, May. What do the rest of you think? Chang, how do you feel about this? Well, um, I'm not sure about June, really. Um, I think it's too early. In fact, far too early. We need more time to plan our marketing. You know, a lot of people, potential buyers, will be away on holiday in June. It's not the best time to have a launch. We need to start with a real bang. Mm, thanks, Cheng. Wan, what's your view? I believe you'd prefer a later date for the launch, is that correct? Yeah, June's too early. I think September's the best time. We can promote the smartphone strongly then with a multimedia campaign. Mm. The last three months of the year have always been the peak period for selling new electronic products. That's when we need to put the phone on the market. Mm. I agree. I think there are good reasons for choosing September. What about the recommended retail price for the phone? Any thoughts on that? Hold on a minute. I thought we were talking about the launch date. Not the price. Okay, May, maybe we are moving a little too fast. Let's get back to the point. I get the feeling that most of us seem to prefer September, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, maybe. Okay, we're agreed. The launch is in September. Now, what about the price? Wan, I asked you to bring us ideas about this. I know we've set a price, but we should think again. I think it should be about 900 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, and your reasons? Well, simply, our main competitor brought out a smartphone recently. Mm -hmm. It retails at just over 1,000 Hong Kong dollars. If we sell at 900, we'll be undercutting them by 10%. So, we'll have a big price advantage at the start of our launch. Good. We need to be sharp on pricing. Now, what sales outlets do you think we should target, Wan? No problem there. We could start with the specialist mobile phone stores and big department stores. After that, we could look at other distribution channels. You know, stations, airports, that sort of thing. Right. Sounds okay to me. Everyone happy with Wan's suggestions? Yeah. yeah. Great. Great. Good. Okay. Maybe the record is a little bit longer than you're expecting, but I believe they were uh, talking very clear. Now you have the freedom to listen to it as many times as you like. Okay, please make sure that you're solving the um, two activities in your notebook and let's see and check the correct answers. So the main um, question, or sorry, the main aim of the meeting is to decide the launch day for the um, DM2000 and the recommended retail price. So that was the two things they talked about uh, in the meeting. Now, which month did they choose for lunch? They discussed a lot. They talked about June and not June and why not June, why? And then at the end, they agreed to um, launch it on September. So we're done with the first activity. Now the second activity, the phrases or the expressions that the chairperson uses. So firstly, okay, everyone, let's begin, shall we? And he said, um, our main purpose is to decide the date of the launch. And then he said, um, any thoughts on that? And finally, let's get back to the point. These are the expressions that he uses. Now, if you can notice such a meeting, went very smoothly and successfully and the main reason because the chairperson and the person who's holding the um the meeting was controlling everyone's um like the uh, role of talking and when to interrupt and when to let others participate if they are quiet 
So I can believe that the successful of any meeting, it belongs to the chairperson, him or herself. Okay, now the same record, but this time, as you can see, we have all the participants in the meeting. We're going to listen to it and we need to fill these blanks. I have nine blanks. The first one is already done. Nine blanks should be filled. Let's listen to it and please try, as I keep re recommending you, try to read it first and then listen to the record. So you have the freedom to post the video, read everything up, like all of these individuals said, and then get back and listen to the video. Uh, sorry, to the uh, record. Now I'm going to put the record. Unit 4. Great Ideas. Track 41. Okay, everyone, let's begin, shall we? Our main purpose is to decide the date of the launch for our new product, DM2000. After that, we've got to decide the recommended retail price for the phone and talk about our marketing plans, okay? May, what's your opinion? Should we launch in June or September? Personally, I'm in favor of June. Let's get into the market early and surprise our competitors. It could give us a big advantage. It might even force them to bring out their new phones earlier. I mean, before they're really ready to do so. Thanks, May. What do the rest of you think? Chang, how do you feel about this? Well, um... I'm not sure about June, really. Mm, I think it's too early. In fact, far too early. We need more time to plan our marketing. You know, a lot of people, potential buyers, will be away on holiday in June. It's not the best time to have a launch. We need to start with a real bang. Mm, thanks, Cheng. Wan, what's your view? I believe you'd prefer a later date for the launch, is that correct? Yeah, June's too early. I think September's the best time. We can promote the smartphone strongly then with a multimedia campaign. Mm. The last three months of the year have always been the peak period for selling new electronic products. That's when we need to put the phone on the market. Mm. I agree. I think there are good reasons for choosing September. What about the recommended retail price for the phone? Any thoughts on that? Hold on a minute. I thought we were talking about the launch date, not the price. Okay, May, maybe we are moving a little too fast. Let's get back to the point. I get the feeling that most of us seem to prefer September, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, maybe. Okay, we're agreed. The launch is in September. Now, what about the price? Wan, I asked you to bring us ideas about this. I know we've set a price, but we should think again. I think it should be about 900 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, and your reasons? Well, simply, our main competitor brought out a smartphone recently. Mm -hmm. It retails at just over 1,000 Hong Kong dollars. If we sell at 900, we'll be undercutting them by 10%. So, we'll have a big price advantage at the start of our launch. Good. We need to be sharp on pricing. Now, what sales outlets do you think we should target, Wan? No problem there. We could start with the specialist mobile phone stores and big department stores. After that, we could look at other distribution channels. You know, stations, airports, that sort of thing. Right. Sounds okay to me. Everyone happy with one suggestions? Yeah. yeah. Great. Great. Good. Okay, now it's the time to fill the blanks with the correct vocabulary, the correct word. Okay, let's check the answers together. So they said, personally, I'm in favor of June. That's May keep insisting on um, launching it on June. Let's go. Let's get into the market early and surprise our competitors. So the like these vocabularies, why they ask you to fill it in the blank or in these blanks because they're really important um, in the business world and they really matter. So I would advise you um, to translate. Uh, put them in sentences, I don't know, write them in your notebook, 
So get advantage of such vocabularies, not only the skill how to hold um, a successful meeting. So competitors is means the other company that's selling the same products, so you both guys are competitors. Okay, <clears throat> campaign has many of uh, meanings, okay, it can mean like um, when you're doing like if you're having an NGO and you're doing a campaign to help um, like people or when you're having a campaign like this one and you're releasing a new product, so it has many meanings. Um, hold on and launch also and let's get back to the point or to the main idea or to the main um, thing that we're talking about. This is what we mean by point. Now, also point has many uh, meanings. Um, the other one, number seven, is um, now what sales outlets do you think we should target? So the word target is very um, used in, in the marketing department and people who are working in marketing right now would know what I'm talking about. So also the word target has uh, different meanings according to the context, the word department also, and channel also has uh, different meanings depends on the context. So these all nine vocabularies are really important. Okay, we come to the final slide of our lecture, and these are the questions that we're going to discuss it in the online uh, session. Please read them very well, prepare your ideas, write them in a notebook, etc., and then we're going to discuss them when we have the online session. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the lecture. See you next time. Bye-bye.